I would now welcome some uh, general reactions, observations to the presentations we've had. I'm going to give an opportunity to the lady who had the question carrying over from uh, the presentations. Thank you very much. Um, I guess uh, to restate the question um, in facilitating a, a response, one of the slides that you presented indicated that 55% of informal vendors sell close to formal vendors. And so I was struck because uh, in the research that I had done in four cities, uh, 10 different informal markets, the vendors tended to sell the, the overwhelming response, at least in my research, was that the vendors, the informal vendors tended to follow the consumers. And in some instances, those consumers were in the formal areas near the formal markets. And in some instances, they were at the bus stops and depots. So um, I guess I was hoping you could explain in, a little further and see if in your research you found a similar trend or if um, you had a, an observation in which this, this came across. Because I was just struck by the fact that so many of the, more than half of the informal vendors in, in your research were selling in formal um, market areas. Thank you. We are combining uh, with the reactions just from the immediate presentation. So we can combine both. Okay. Savon. Yeah, hello. I'm Sylvia Seno from University of Ghana. Um, my question goes to the last presenter. Um, you recommend that Africa should learn from other developed countries. So I want to ask more specifically, what are the recommendations that you give to um, Africa? So I ask this because I think um, the root cause of this waste disposal problem is, is strongly linked with education. Waste disposal in Africa is very illicit. People throw waste anywhere. Whereas when you come to the developed world, uh, waste is sorted rightly from homes before, you know, people don't throw things about anyhow. I mean, in Africa, government and some private companies, the, the PPP you were suggesting, some are in place, but you see people still throw the waste out of the, of the beans. So what specific recommendations would you really give to <laughs> Africa on this waste disposal issue? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Should I answer now? Okay, let's, let's get, oh. it's, it's me that to him. Let's get. Oh. Thank you. I'm Jerimano Mwabo from University of Nairobi in Kenya. You, you recommend that uh, the informal waste sector be supported. The evidence you provide shows that it should not be supported, okay, because it's actually hazardous to health, and even the income that it provides also has a negative spillover, even on other non non-income welfare measures. And in fact, I, I feel that uh, we shouldn't have a category of workers called scavengers. As scav scavengers are uh, another form of uh, poverty measure. The more scavengers we have, the greater the poverty in general. So we should actually move towards uh, uh, a system where we eliminate the informal waste sector uh, category in the economy. We don't have uh, scavengers in Finland. We don't have them in Japan. And they are. I live there. <laughs> in Japan? Yeah. And in the US also. In New York you can find, or in, in, in Los Angeles you can hundreds, hundreds of them. Oh, okay, so uh, I'm sorry about, uh, about that observation. I didn't know that they, they are there, but even there, they sh they, they, they shouldn't be. My point is, we should not have a category of workers called scavengers. Thank you very much. Let's get a reaction from Martin on. All right, very, very good questions, very good points. Yes, uh, in terms of recommendations, oh, I, I could spend uh, an hour probably <laughs> in terms of recommendations. But basically, uh, the, uh, the, um, some of the main, the most important lessons that have been learned is that um, the um, people, yes, education should be used as a long-term solution, you know, of course, uh, including um, any, uh, how waste affects people's uh, health, how, uh, how it affects 
the, the um, pollution, how pollution from waste affects lakes, affects bodies of water, how it affects the air, and then how then it can affect people, the, the, you know, eventually. Uh, but in terms of short-term solutions, um, one of the main ones is that um, people react to incentives. I mean, incentives are very powerful. For example, in, uh, in one, an, an interesting program in Manila that I didn't, uh, I didn't present here, but if, you're, if anyone is interested, I can send you the information, is that um, even in the slums, in the, in the, in the low, low income areas, if you provide an incentive, people will react. Like, for example, if you buy materials, pa plastics, paper, uh, metals, uh, by the kilo, there is, there is um, certain, uh, of course, differences in, in, in prices. You pay a certain amount for aluminum, certain amount for other metals, for paper, cardboard, and things. So there's, there's uh, different categories, of, of, uh, and then uh, uh, different prices paid. But if you just pay the people by, by the kilo, then uh, even low-income uh, people will do whatever they can to separate. Their, 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 their waste into different categories so that they can sell them. In, another, in, in Surabaya, in Indonesia, the municipality decided to uh, pay by the kilo of compost. They, they teach people, each household can have its own compost bin. And they told them, they taught them how to do it. They trained them how to do it. And then they provided the bins. And then they, they throw in their, their food leftovers, organics, and then they can make their own compost, and there is uh, sold to the municipality. It's not much. It's like seven uh, cents of a dollar per kilo. But that itself, for, for low-income people, that is an incentive, and they will do. There is even some um, evidence that the people, children or any other, will collect organic waste that is thrown on the streets so that they can uh, process it, uh, convent, convert it into compost, and then make more money. Um, if um, I would suggest you to read, read my book, and there's a lot of recommendations there. But basically, uh, incentives, uh, proper policies, and, and a change, a shift related to, to your question, to the second question, uh, is that um, a shift from uh, the, the, the answer to the, uh, to the waste management programs in Africa or in Asia or in Latin America is not high technology. It's not the technology used in Europe or in Japan. It's not. Is more appropriate, labor-intensive technology that uses appropriate equipment. And uh, that can be, for example, as I mentioned, I was in Sierra Leone recently. And uh, there, uh, while I was there, they were having serious problems in terms of they use uh, skips, you know, where people bring their waste and then it's, it's taken by a, by, a, by, a, by a large truck. The truck was not operational because they didn't have the resources. They didn't have the spare parts that have to be imported to be functional. So there was no collection, no waste collection when I was there. And people just throw, throw, threw the waste around wherever they can. So we need a, a shift of paradigm in terms of how, it, uh, in terms of technology and in terms of considering the IWS, it can be a partner. There's, there's um, uh, a lot of evidence in my book. I mentioned uh, uh, um, examples in, uh, in Egypt, in the Philippines, Mexico, Argentina, uh, Brazil, uh, Colombia, there's a, lot, there's a lot of evidence that shows that uh, uh, working with the WC is, is, is better than ignoring them or better than repressing them. Um, there, is, um, um, there, there are more and more governments are supporting the, 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 the waste sector. But you are right. I mean, you are right. You, you, if you can see the... the if you, can, if you haven't been to any landfill where there are, there are uh, waste pickers, I would suggest everyone go, go to these places to see how impressive it is. But what I'm proposing here is that, uh, and actually what the people, what the waste, if you talk to the waste pickers in Brazil or in Colombia and other countries, they don't want to work there. They would rather work on the streets on a, where there's segregation at the source so that they can only collect the materials that are already segregated, not on the landfills, not, not at the dumps. That is highly unsanitary and high risk to their health. That, that's not what they want. They want to collect on the streets and uh, uh, material that is already segregated. That reduces the risks significantly. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, get, uh, before, let's get... I mean, to respond to the question, which was All right, so I think you're right. I mean, the, 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 from, from, uh, from, the, from the work we've done, it's quite clear that uh, 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 people choose to trade in parts of the city where there's a, 
where there's a hive of economic activity, and those tend m m most often to be linked up with uh, n n nodes of transport uh, transport changes. So where it's where the so the sort of buses and the and the and the sort of taxis and the trains uh, sort of uh, uh, tend to converge. Uh, I think the the point that I didn't get so, 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 uh, get get, uh, get to make is that there's a, a tension between between the choices people make and the views that that managers of these cities have about what these spaces uh, spaces should look like. So there's a view that these spaces should be um, modern spaces with with uh, with a, a a shift from informal retailing to formal retailing, and the large retailers are, are sort of moving into these areas. Uh, but but it, uh, it's 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 still not clear to me whether that's whether the the, the sort of larger impact is one where the, uh, where, where, where formal formal retailing is replacing informal retailing, or whether the the whether the changes in these in, in in these spaces might might increase the 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 the, uh, the, the amount of economic activity and might well generate even more informal informal trading opportunities, but I think what's what's clear from the research and and if I if I had the time to report on on a, a larger number of the focus groups is that there's there's ma massive amounts of harassment where um, managers of cities uh, uh, kind of have a view of the economy that is quite unlike this and it, it sort of goes back to those models that I set up in the start there's a view that that, that there's a that what you want is an economy that is a more modern economy and and all of this informal work which is where the bulk of the of the people are is is somehow some sort of sort of backward sector, um, uh, and in some ways that in some ways the discussion about the waste sector is is not unlike that. That, that managers want to to come in and clean up the space. We'll you know we'll 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 make the space like it is in Finland, uh, rather than understanding what are the what's the sort of nature of the economic activity that's happening. Thank you. Um, if, are there any observations from the floor? Uh, uh, our presenters have some final remarks. I think uh, Ivan. I'm not sure about a final final okay. remark. I want to do, encourage the debate to keep going. Unless we are, are, are we under time? Pressures? Yeah, actually, we are. We are. All, the time is almost time up. up. Okay. So just a, a comment to my colleagues. A question to my colleagues. Um, what's what is distinctive? The question is what is distinctive about the waste sector and can we generalize from that for other parts of the informal economy? Uh, it strikes me that um, the, from listening to, to Martin that the issue of organization seems to be critically important to enable this uh, activity to be more productive, to be safer, to improve the conditions of people working in it. There has to be a degree of organization and management about that uh, to, cr to make a more efficient solution. So the question was, how does that come about? How is it in Brazil and Colombia and these other places? They, it is so seems to be so positive the experience. How has it come about? I guess it's emerged over years. But you know, has the government played a, a role? Does it have a role to play, particularly in Africa, to support, to facilitate, to regulate, to you know, enable this to happen? Um, I think is the key issue, and it's not just relevant to the informal waste sector. It's re relevant, as I say, to all to the informal economy generally. I don't know whether that question you'd want to pick up too. What's, you know, what's, how does one improve upon the, uh, the conditions in these, in these informal sectors? Um, because in some cases it is dangerous, it is, you know, exploitative. Um, how does one make progress um, except through, through, through government? Do you have any remarks? Uh, yeah, in the case in the case of uh, Latin America, uh, Brazil and Colombia, uh, they uh, the private sector was very important, and especially foundations and NGOs. 
that did a lot of research that, that tried, started to help uh, the uh, informal sector to get, uh, to, to get organized. The, the effort started in Colombia. And from there, it's, it's, it spread throughout South America. So um, um, knowing, uh, get, first get, getting people organized, and then try to educate society. Uh, and pressure, you know, pressure to the, to, the, to the decision makers, and also research to show how uh, the benefits, you know, of the informal sector, the, the economic Im uh, impact of their activities. And, and that was also, for example, very important in, in, uh, in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. After the 2002 uh, uh, serious economic crisis, the, uh, the informal sector grew uh, dramatically. So they brought, uh, there were a, a group of um, uh, academics who brought uh, organized events uh, uh, and uh, to educate the poli policy makers. And they reacted positively. In just one year, it went from repression to active promotion of the activity. Thank you uh, very much. I think uh, let's give a round of applause to our presenters. Uh, before we disperse.